So in this video we're looking at the geometric interpretation of systems of linear equations in two dimensions and three dimensions. That is a long and scary looking title, but really it just means pictures of systems, of groups of linear equations in two dimensions and three dimensions. Now you've done these in two dimensions before. Here's our system of linear equations and you can see it results in this. Two lines meeting in a single point. In this case, I think it's 3, 2. But that's not the only thing that can happen when you have a system of two linear equations in two dimensions. There are two other things that can happen as well. They could be parallel, and if they were parallel, that means they're never going to meet. They're a set of train tracks. Both have a gradient of 2, never going to meet, no solution there. But there is another thing as well that can happen when you've got two lines. Look at these two. What do you notice? What's interesting about these? Well, this equation here looks very much like this equation, just doubled. But I can simplify that equation by dividing both sides by 2. And if I did that, it would look more like this. What this means is that this line is the same as this line. So if I draw them, there's the first line. But then the second line, I would need to draw right over the top again. There are two lines there. Okay, in conclusion, the geometric interpretation of Systems of two linear equations in two dimensions can result in three different things. One solution, no solutions, or infinity solutions. Because every single point along those two lines that are identical is a solution to that system of linear equations. I'll just write that system of linear equations. So that's stuff you already know. It's not really what we're here to talk about. This 3D thing is what we're here to talk about, and this is where you're really going to have to start thinking because it's hard to visualize. But luckily, I brought some props. So it's time to start talking about systems of three linear equations with three variables. So that's going to look something like this here. So those are all uh, equations of planes, right? Where A, B, C, and K are all numbers, and these are our variables. So this first plane might look a little bit like that on that angle. And then we've got another plane which might look a little bit like that. And then we've got another third plane that might look a slightly different way. And we're wondering how do these three planes interact with each other? So there are a variety of options, more than three options like our lines had. Let's go through each of them in turn. Here's my first option. I have three planes here. They could be on any kind of angle. But the important thing to note is there's this little tiny bit in there where they meet. These three planes meet at a single point there. Now, you see this happen all the time. Uh, the floor of a room, one wall of the room, and another wall of a room are three planes, and they all meet at a single point. This is doing something similar. It's on a bit of a different angle, but same deal. Here's my second option. Now, I've got three planes here, and they've been placed through each other. They're meeting along a line. So, these three planes aren't meeting at a single point. Instead, we can come up with a vector equation or a Cartesian equation for the line on which they meet. This one was fun to build. All right, so we have three planes here that all share the same normal, the ruler is the normal, which means that they're all parallel to each other, which means they will never meet. The, you can think of them as like floors in a building, um, that's probably a good way to think about it, but these three planes, they're never going to meet. We can end up in a sort of rock, scissors, paper situation where um, blue and purple meet, uh, yellow and blue meet, yellow and purple meet, but they have no common point of intersection, no common line of intersection. So this is another interesting way that three planes can not meet in this instance. You can also end up in weird situations like this where you have two parallel ones, they share the same normal, and then one that cuts through the middle of those. So two that never meet and one that meets both of them. That's another option for our geometric interpretation. And finally, we get to this. 
three identical planes. So you'll remember that we had two identical lines when we were talking in 2D. We can have three identical planes as well. They are meeting at an infinite number of points. Every single point on the plane is a common point for all three of these or as a solution to the system of linear equations. Now you can do your best to draw these in your notes. Good luck with that. Uh, now the three planes can meet at a single point. That means this is going to have a single solution, a single point. It'll say the point that they meet at is 3, 2, 1. It might say they meet on a line, in which case they'll give you the equation of a line. Something like that. Now, they never meet. They're the same. They're all parallel. Um, three planes meet each other, but not in the same place. Two parallel, one meets the others. All three of these instances, this system of linear equations is not going to have a single solution. It's not going to have a point, and it's not going to have a line either. And finally, we, oh, we'll just put zero there, zero solutions. And finally, here, we have an infinite number of solutions if all of those equations are just the same equation. Um, this one might be this one times two and this one times three, but they're all the same. In which case, uh, when you solve that system of linear equations, it's going to spit something out and you're going to realize that you have an infinite number of solutions there. Okay, that's the geometric interpretation of systems of linear equations. Um, we really need to start working out how to solve these quickly and efficiently, and that's what the next few videos are going to be about.